this is Teresa Jackson. Today I have a beginner level tutorial to explain the concept of Photoshop layers. You will need the layers panel open in order to follow along. If you don't see the layers panel, you can find it under the window menu and about halfway down you'll see layers. If you see a check mark next to layers, that means it's open somewhere on your screen. If you don't see a check mark, then you can turn it on and that should make it available. At the bottom of the layers panel are some icons. The second one to the last that looks like a page, if you click that, it will create a new layer. So I'm going to click that. It added a new layer that says layer one that's on top of the original layer that's titled background. If I click this again, I'll get another layer. These are empty layers. They have no content in them. And you can see that by, the, um, by looking at this little picked preview of the, the layer. I'm going to make this bigger so that you can even uh, see it a little bit better. If I click in the upper right-hand corner of the Layers panel, there's a lot of options here. Down here at the bottom where it says panel options, I'm going to go to that. You don't have to do this yourself. I'm doing this to make the preview a little bit larger. So in the layer panel options, I'm going to pick this largest preview and say OK. And now the layer preview in the layer panels is much bigger. So you can see these two layers that I created are empty. The gray check stands for it it represents transparency. So there's no pixels in those. They're completely empty at this point. If I want to delete a layer, I can click right in the middle of the layer and drag down and release right over top of the trash can in the lower right hand side. Or I can click on this drop down in the upper right and I can choose delete layer. And then if I, if I choose that option, then I have this message pop up. So let's do that again. Let's click New Layer. Didn't mean to do two. If I go Command-Z or Control-Z, that'll remove one of them. If I Control-click um, on the layer, I get a pop-up that says Delete Layer here. So that's another way we can delete it. I'm going to switch to this uh, document here that I created called Layer Sample. So I've stacked up three different images on layers in this. The eye on the left-hand side, this eyeball, that's the visibility. So if I click on that eyeball, it'll turn the visibility off of that top layer of the sunset. And then you see the tiger below. If I click on this and turn the visibility off, then you can see the bird below. So it goes from the top down, priority of what you see. You can think of layers, I like to think of them as pieces of paper on a desk, and you can shuffle the order of them. If I want to put the tiger on the top of the stack, I can just click and drag it up and let go, and now the tiger's on the top of the stack and I don't see what's below it. Now I turn the visibility off on the tiger. The uh, sunset image here is a smaller file than the other two and so I have transparency around it because it's not quite as big. If I turn the visibility off on the bird below then we'll see just the sunset and you'll see these uh, gray and white checkerboard that represents transparency. You, it's, Think of it as a sheet of glass or clear mylar. You can see right through it to what's below. So if I turn the visibility back on on the bird, we can see through that transparent area to the bird image below. If I'm on the move tool and I click, I select this layer and I click in the middle and move it around, you can see that it's just laying on top of the bird. Now the, the key here, the difference between these layers and this one that says background, is the background image which is what you get when you first open your image in Photoshop out of Lightroom or Camera Raw. Think of the background as being the bottom of your stack of paper that's glued to the desk. So if I want to take this sunset and drag it and put it below the bird, I can't because because it's it's adhered, it's locked down. But if I want to release it from the desktop, I just click on this lock here and it changes the name to layer zero and now I can change the priority and I can put the bird on top of the sunset. Okay, I'm going to close out of this file and go back to the um, single layer image. 
So why are layers cool? What's so awesome about them? Well, first of all, it allows you to create edits on top of your image non-destructively. Let's add, let's add a brand new layer here. And I'm going to go to my brush tool with the B key. And I'm going to pick a little bit bigger brush so that we can see it and maybe take the hardness up. And I'll just sign my name on this. So it's on its own layer. If I turn the visibility on and off, I haven't destroyed any of the pixels of the bird. And if I go to my move tool, I can move the position around as well. So if I was to have painted right here on this layer, on the background layer, so let's go back to the brush, and I had the flow turned down really low. I'm not sure why, and that's why we saw that kind of stair stepping in that brush. So I'm going to crank this up to 100%. So clicking on that arrow, I can take this all the way up to 100%. And now when I sign my name, it should come out totally solid black. But what I've done is I've destroyed pixels because I painted right on the pixels of the bird. I can't move it. If I go to the move tool, I can't move this at all because the layer is locked. If I unlock the layer, the name moves with the image because I painted it right onto it. So this is a really good, powerful reason why you would use layers is that you can edit non-destructively and all of your original pixels are still there. I'm going to use the, um, the history panel and let's just go all the way back up to open on this. When you create a, a new blank layer like this, you can think of it as a cartoon cell, like cartoon um, illustrators who create a matte, they paint a matte background and then all of their characters go on individual plastic sheets or mylar. So let's just do something really funky and say I have my figure here. Then it's floating on its own plastic layer or something that's clear. So if I turn the visibility off on the bird, you can see through that. If I go to my move tool and I move this around, he can be, my character can be dancing across the screen and it doesn't affect the background. So here's one other tip on selecting a layer. If right now notice that layer one is highlighted blue. So that is the selected layer. If I click down here on the background layer and I'm in the move tool, when I click and go to drag, I'm going to get that error message that I can't move it because the layer is locked. Okay, well, let's unlock it. And now when I click, it's going to drag that image around. But I wanted to move my figure, not the bird. So I'm going to do a Command Z or Control Z to reset that. I'm going to click right here on my little drawing, but it's still picking the bird up and moving it. So the way that we fix that is we change the default setting up here where it says auto select in the upper left hand corner. Turn that on and change the auto select to layer. And now wherever you click, it's going to see the pixels under where you click. So layer zero is highlighted, but if I click right on the line drawing here, it's switched and it's selected layer one. So we can drag our figure around the scene. Now one other thing, you can get really good at your file management and rename all these layers, which is really handy if you're working with somebody else and passing your files off. So you can double click right on the name and give it something that's a little bit more descriptive. In, in something this simple, it doesn't seem necessary, but if you're doing really complex composites, you could have a hundred layers in your image and then it gets really hard to find something. But if you have these named, it makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for.